Thank you, Abraham. I'm very happy to visit with you again. Joy truly is the key, and I feel like I'm there mostly in my life. And uh, I've been thinking about that a lot lately and happy and been in a high-flying space. And uh, remember what you're saying about we are all in this together. So the other day I was listening to um, the YouTube video you have uh, on the French Riviera cruise, and I never heard of the classical piano version of the joy is the key. So I'm starting to learn piano, and I went online to look for the sheet music, and I found Francine Jerry, and I couldn't find it anywhere. So I reached out to her, and, and she responded via email. She didn't hear of it either, but she says to say hello to you, and she's actually putting together sheet music for me so that I can learn how to play the piano with that song. Some CDs from her are on the table there, things beyond just that song, yeah. Thank you. So with that being said, I have a question for you um, regarding expectation and our perspective. And I heard you mention that lately, that the expectation and perspective is our point of attraction. Can you elaborate a little bit more about that? We like the word expectation because expectation couples, it combines desire and belief. So it is a very descriptive word of what your point of attraction actually is. If you want something and you expect it, there's no resistance. If you want something and you don't expect it, then there is resistance. In other words, want to go further? Sometimes I'm curious about things that I pick up on, like a thought or something when I think of someone. Recently, I thought of somebody who's coming to teach a yoga workshop here, and uh, I thought of him, and I thought of a friend of mine, and I said, I wonder if Molly's actually ever heard of him before. And then next thing you know, I looked on, on Facebook, and he was coming here. And I'm like, well, what is that coming up? Is that my expectation? Well, did you hear us talking earlier about carving out these thought pathways? The most important thing to understand about creation is that it is all about point of attraction and point of attraction is all about what you're asking for and what you're letting in or not. So many people ask for things that they don't let in. They don't even know that they're doing it because those thoughts feel sort of normal. The thought is so familiar that in a thought sense it doesn't seem off it's only when you begin to use your emotional guidance system that you can feel that it is off so we're talking a lot these days about the thought pathways that your thoughts carve out you've been carving out thoughts and your inner being has been receiving them and setting things in motion but the thing is you continue to carve out thoughts which then help you to let in what's lined up for you or not Esther had a series of experiences. Now she's really wanting to get deep into her personal awareness of these thought pathways. The idea of thought pathways is just fascinating to her. Is it to you that you can think a thought and therefore offer a vibration that dictates what happens next? And you want to know how literally the universe responds to you? Well, big time, literally you get what you think about sometimes you say oh I must be psychic well it doesn't matter what you call it if you get tuned into your inner being you can feel sometimes what is on its way to you people say well I had a premonition about this or I had that thought and then it happened what's up with that well it's no big amazing thing is that you carved out a thought pathway and it's pretty obvious that thoughts like that are going to come down the pathway that you've carved out so first thoughts come and then words come and then other people come other people that think those thoughts come other people that think those thoughts and say those words come that's what the thought pathways are about a few days ago a month or so ago when esther came back from a trip she found her cadillac escalate it's a big vehicle as vehicles go. it's an suv it had been bumped in the front not badly the license plate and what was behind it were smushed and the grill was broken a little bit and Esther's grandson was with her they were coming back from a family trip the people there had moved the car for her did ask for a VIP parking there wasn't one available they said leave us your keys we will move it for you and so Esther thought 
because they'd backed it in and maybe left it in a precarious place or maybe bumped it. I guess someone must have bumped it while we left it here. And Luke said, no, grandma, that's been there for a while. <laughs> and he's very observant. Cars matter a lot to him. And his mother said, why didn't you say something? And he said, because I thought grandma did it and I thought she knew she did it and I didn't want to hurt her feelings. <laughs> so Esther said, I didn't do it, but I don't know when it happened and it doesn't really matter. And so it took her a while to find the time to get it in. And she actually waited for her check oil light to come on before she took it in. <laughs> and then while it was there, she asked them to repair it. And so she picked her car up on Monday and then on Wednesday, she was parked in front of a new house that she's building in San Antonio. And when she came out, there was a man there that had been working on the audiovisual things in the house. And he's standing in front of her car, looking very dismayed. And Esther said, what's up? And he said, I am so sorry. I am so sorry. I'm so sorry. And Esther said, what? And he said, my car slipped out of gear and it rolled into your car. <laughs> and Esther looked and its nose was broken again. <laughs> Not very much just a little scuff really and a little bit of missing paint and Esther began to laugh and she said don't worry about it I'm on a roll <laughs> he said really I have my insurance papers and she said there is no insurance against this <laughs> it's my point of attraction and so then this was just really really recently like just happened and so Esther is thinking all right now I don't remember feeling any strong negative emotion and I don't remember thinking any strong thoughts about it, but I do remember feeling inconvenienced and I do remember waiting for a while before I took it in. And I do remember being really glad when it was fixed. And I do remember not liking it when it was broken. She had had sort of thoughts all over the place. Now we know this sounds like nitpicking, but we really want you to hear this thoughts about people bumping into things that matter to Esther. Their thoughts that she thinks she worries about her housekeeper dusting her yard rose and breaking little fingers off of delicate people. She has those thoughts. Esther cares about how things are and takes very good care of things, but can't control the clumsy people of the world. <laughs> There's a lot of you here. <laughs> We're getting to something really interesting. So yesterday she's on an airplane leaving San Antonio and everything's on schedule. Everything's on time. And while they're taxiing, there's a slight bump so slight that Esther thought it was a pothole. There are some in a lot of runways and tarmacs in airport. And then the captain came on and said, whoop, someone may have bumped our tail. And Esther thought, of course they did. <laughs> I'm sorry to everyone on this airplane. <laughs> and then he said, it was very slight, but we can't take a chance. And so everyone got off the airplane and there were two airplanes out there now damaged because they had slightly tapped one another. Somehow Esther's been looking to see how that could even happen. How is it even possible that that could happen? But now she is willing to admit that there are thought pathways and that she doesn't take responsibility for the pilots. She doesn't take responsibility for the drivers, but she does understand why things like that are showing up when she's around. She does understand how she's carved out thought pathways so that she is in the vicinity when things like that happen because manifestations come on the heels of what you're carving out. They just do. And so when wonderful things happen, Esther says, I did that. I'm part of that. And when not so wonderful things happen, Esther says, that must have been you. No, <laughs> she is understanding more and more and more and more and more. Now we don't want you to panic and feel worried about things. Esther is really wanting to fine tune. She is living a magnificent life experience. She wants to understand all of the sudden nuances, but most of all, she wants to understand how her thoughts create pathways 
that cause other things that are a vibrational match to them to rendezvous with her and every single day there is obvious evidence every day manifestations that say that's how it works that's how it works that's how it works as sure as when you jump off a building you're going to fall down not up the law of attraction is consistent and once you start paying attention to what you're doing then you have more control of your point of attraction yes so now bring us back around to where you are recently my grandfather made his transition and I went up to Canada for the celebration of life service and I know that he's here right now non physical with us and he is in an amazing space and I was up there with my family and I was finding it very hard to have my own experience in the moment and wondering how I was causing all this stuff from my point of attraction rather than saying all this stuff that I'm causing from my point of attraction instead say something more like I'm rendezvousing with a lot of things and my response to what I'm rendezvousing with is carving out the next path and the next path and the next path Esther really thought that she was being very light about her bumps on her Cadillac's nose and she was mostly light especially when there were people there people that she didn't want them to worry people that she wanted to set a good example for especially the man who felt so bad when his card rolled out of gear and bumped it she really wanted to soothe him <laughs> she did she wanted to soothe him but was she thinking otherwise oh another trip down there another loner car and it is not easy not to react to life and what deliberate creation is is deliberate reaction to life it's not putting yourself in a corner or a cave or a hole where things can't get to you it's not getting in a protective stance it's not even discontinuing watching television or discontinuing going to movies or discontinuing getting out there where people are it's setting the tone of how you want to feel often enough and reaching for satisfaction thoughts in those moments that you do have control that sets the pace for what comes next and next and next really what we're talking about in all the hours that we are together with you and those like you is how to prepare yourself vibrationally for the best things coming through your pathways and so yes it is a value when you get a result to contemplate how that came about but don't spend too much time doing that just start right with the laws as you know them to be I have attracted this and there are reasons that I have and those reasons are going to become more evident to me and I'm going to work the bugs out of them in moments in time when I have more creative control the truth of it is in those three examples that we offered about Esther's bumping or being bumped is that there was nothing serious going on nothing big happened it was at most inconvenient or at most slightly amusing it's amusing it's amusing when you think about how cooperative the universe is how cooperative the universe is and when you are fine-tuning don't you want to get good at this don't you want to understand it? Esther can't live with less than creative control now that she knows creative control is possible Esther doesn't want to be sloppy in her thinking she doesn't want to just think about this and that and that she doesn't want to be part of the masses who are carving out thought pathways to things unwanted she's very fast with the mute button she mutes the television when commercials come on that she does not believe are advantageous to the world and yet even her muting is a sort of sign of defiance against something you got to figure it out and you're all doing really well and your life experience that's coming to you is way better than it is not good there are so many things that are working but clean it up 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 release resistance release resistance release resistance which mostly means don't give so much thought to so many things you just don't have to you could start with this very powerful truthful simple premise my vortex is full of what I want and my inner being knows where I am in relationship to all of it and is guiding me toward it and all I have to do is do my best in more moments of the day of feeling satisfied and feeling as good as I can feel and when I find myself getting on a tangent or getting on a soapbox or pushing hard against something I just got to know I'm not doing any good for anyone and especially for me I'm setting up a path of more resistance which is going to show up 
and I'm going to complain about it and I'm going to protest law of attraction and I'm going to say I don't see how I was part of that but anything that you observe anything you witness anything you experience you are a vibrational part of